Hey class, how's it going? We got kind of part two here of our example questions for work and energy, our last video that's gonna be kind of tailored around our work and energy here. For this, I'm gonna do question five from our actual practice sheet, as well as I'm gonna add in two questions that look at kind of angles. So one where I'm applying a force with an angle, and then one where it's on a ramp, and we can kind of look at that. So let's kind of get into our questions here and see what we got here. So let's go, let's bring this up. And through this on. All right, so question five here. A 1,200 kilogram car, so mass equals 1,200 kilograms, is moving at 50 kilometers per hour. Anytime you see kilometers per hour now, just change it to meters per second. I try not to add it to our assignments too much. I've done it maybe twice in all six assignments. Every time I do though, it, it does seem to trip up some students. So anytime you see 50 kilometers an hour, just change that. This is 13.9 meters per second. Again, all I have to do is divide 3.6, okay? Divide by 2.6 and you'll get that. So 13.9 meters per second. All right, let's keep going. The driver applies the, applies the brakes and the car comes to a stop after 60 meters. So how much work is done? Now, I have, a, I have an actual distance. Like if I'm trying to figure out work, I have these two formulas. I have force and distance and I have a distance there or I have change of energy and this one's gonna be a lot easier to work with the change of energy I had a velocity and then because the car stopped my velocity is zero and so then I have that big change of energy and so that's what I'm going to use to actually figure out my work done so my work is going to equal my change of energy here so what was my initial energy kinetic energy at the start equals one half mv squared mass 1200 13.9 is my velocity all right so when i plug that in my calculator one half times 1200 and then 13.9 squared i get a large number a very large number 115,926. all right joules that was the car's initial energy now at the very end we have a stopped car, which means my velocity is zero. And if my velocity is zero at the very end, my kinetic energy is zero. So this is my change in energy. So my change in energy, also known as my work, is 115,926. So there's that first part, there's A. For B, it's asking like, what was the actual force of friction on the car? And most students would be like, well, what, wasn't all that force technically the force of friction? You're right, but I want to know like per second how much work is the actual car doing friction-wise because you can have cars that have better brakes that have more friction, which means they can actually have a higher like stopping rate. Okay, this stopped after 16 meters, so I want to know how much force those brakes are applying every second, and that's what I have to do. So to get this, the nice thing is now that I have my work, and I have the distance, I can figure out that force of friction. And in this question, friction is the only thing kind of actually stopping the car. So that's why we can say that force is just friction force. So for B, my work, which is this number, 115926 equals force, which is force friction, multiplied by 16, the distance, divide, divide. My force of friction is not as big a number, 7,000. 245 newtons. This was joules, and this is newtons. So that's how much the brakes apply a force with every second to actually slow this down car. Cool. All right, so there's question A, kind of going through that. All right, the next two questions, if you want to write them down and try them out, you can absolutely do that. If you just kind of want to watch me go through it as well, we can. So here's our next two questions. Question, I call it question eight, because your worksheet stops at question six, so I just kind of made two new questions here. So if you want to actually stop and try this out, I'll talk about it, and then you can try it out before if you'd like as well. Okay, it says, Mr. Westwood is pulling her daughter on a sled with a force of 400 newtons. So force, 400 newtons. Okay, at an angle of 20 degrees. So basically, there's me pulling my daughter on a sled. And there's an angle of 20 degrees. Okay, if he pulls her for a distance of 15 meters, 
what work is done? Now this question seems like it's going to be really easy, and it actually still is easy, but we can't just use 415 because my daughter is moving in this direction. One second, I'll get a different color. My daughter is moving in this direction, and I am pulling not in that same direction. I am pulling up at an angle. And so when we look at the force, the force that we use for our work has to be pulling in the exact same direction that the object is moving. So basically, I need to find the force in this direction, which is not too, too bad. You remember from earlier on, way back in the uh, start, when we did vectors to find force x and force y, this is cos theta times force applied, and this is sine theta times force applied. Okay, which kind of makes sense. Like cos is co, like, like cos is adjacent, ka, cha. And then, so this is my adjacent. So I want to find my force x here. Once I get my force x, then I can multiply by 15 and I'm done. So if I go cos of 20 degrees times 400, because that's my force applied, it gives me something 370 something, 375, 376, 376. Newton. So that's what my x direction is pulling in. Now that I have that, work is not too bad. Work equals 376 times 15. That's a weird 5. That's better. And so my overall work done is yada, 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 1,767. 1,767. Okay, so that's how much work I am doing. I know it's 400, I'm pulling with 400, but I'm not like converting all of that energy into like where she's going. So I have to make sure that I need to know exactly what direction she's going and I need to find that force, that force going in that direction. Okay, after this, if I want to know how fast she was going, you could use this, but for now, that's just what, I just wanted to get across the point of if I'm pulling at any angle, I need to find the actual angle that, like the direction the object's moving. Okay, hopefully that's not too bad. Last question. Again, we're bringing inclined planes. These things keep coming back. Yes, they do. Let's kind of look at that. All right. So it says, Mr. Westwood is pushing on a box with a mass of 30 kilograms. Mass equals 30. Up a ramp. And we're going to say it's frictionless for now, OK? Just, just to make it easier, all right? There is an angle of 40 degrees. 40 degrees. Okay, how much force is needed to push the buck up the ramp? Okay, so there's no friction. So if I need to push this buck up box up the ramp, how much force do I need? Well, what's the only force opposing me right now? What's the only force kind of stopping me? And that's my force parallel. Force parallel is going to be one of the box to go down. So as soon as I get past force parallel, the box will be moving up. So that's what I want to find first. All right, 30, what is my force gravity? Force gravity is 290 something, 294. And then inclined planes, again, inclined planes to find force parallel, sine, theta. Um, you have these, oh, again, you have those in your notes. So force parallel, sine, force parallel, sine, theta times force gravity. So I'm going to get sine of 40 times 294. Force parallel, I get 188.9. All right. So that is what is pushing down. As soon as I get over that, as soon as I get over that, I'm able then to basically be this. So we're going to say, like, basically just go one whole number ahead. The force needed to get up the ramp is 189. OK? As soon as you do that, that's how much force you'll need to actually start moving this way. So it says how much force is needed to push the box up the ramp. All right. So we have force of 189 newtons. It says how much work would be needed to push the height of, it says 8 meters. I need 6 meters here, though. So let's change this. Change this to 6 meters real quickly. Da -da -da -da. Okay. A little typo, but there we go. 
how much work would be needed to push it up to a height of six meters? So if I wanted to go to a height of six meters, it shows me how long this ramp is. So again, I'm just gonna take my force and multiply it by the distance. Now, it's gonna to get to six meters height-wise, but I need to push up this ramp that's 9.35. So my work here equals 189, the force, multiplied by 9.35. When I do that, I get 1,767 joules. That's how much energy it took. The way you can double check this as well, okay? The way you can double check this, because you can also get the energy at the top, okay? If, if you did this right, technically if the box, get, box gets all the way up to here, a height of six meters, you're gonna know what its potential energy is. If it was down here, it had no potential energy. If it gets all the way to the top, it has that much potential energy, which is also a change in energy. So let's, let's look at that for two seconds. What is the potential energy at the very top? Well, if I go mass of 30 times gravity times height, if I go 30 times 9.8, times six, look at this, I get 1,764. Now we're gonna ignore the little three difference because my decimal wasn't exactly 9.35, it was like 9.35, yada, yada, yada. But they're basically exactly the same, okay? And so if you wanted to know how much work would the need to push up to six meters, the highest meters, you could also go the change in energy way. Again, this change of energy, at zero potential energy at the bottom. It went up to a height of six meters, there's the potential energy. You can figure it that way as well. But once you have this force, it's not too bad, okay? This will be the hardest type of question you get this week for our work. Um, there'll be one very similar to this um, on your question. So hopefully these aren't too, too bad. Hopefully it still kind of makes sense in the work and energy uh, realm. If you have any questions, class, just let me know. Uh, we can work them out. All right, awesome. Have a great day, class.